Mastering chatbots is probably one of the biggest life hacks or cheat codes in modern times. So in this video, we're gonna break down the different ones available and which one might be best for your particular purpose. You've probably heard of ChatGPT4, but have you heard of Llama3 or Claude3 Opus, as these are some of the biggest competitors to OpenAI's large language model. Some of these services are paid, or in other words, require a premium subscription, but I'll make very clear in this video what are the best free variants and what are the best overall models to choose from. By the end of this video, you'll know how to increase your knowledge and leverage in almost all areas of work and productivity, because in my opinion, knowing how to operate chatbots is the modern day cheat code. So jumping straight in, this is one of the most popular chatbot leaderboards, and it's based primarily on user feedback. So the items towards the top are the models that most people consider to be the best or most useful overall. So in this video, I'm mainly gonna try and focus on the models in and around the top 10, although there are some free variants that's worth mentioning that are technically outside of that. And the first chatbot of choice is called Claude. And this is by the company Anthropic, and we actually have a choice of three different models depending on your use case or needs, and they are Claude 3 Haiku, Claude 3 Sonnet, and Claude 3 Opus. Think of each one as the lightweight version, the everyday medium version, and the heavy version that is the most capable respectively. Like all of the options in this video, it's relatively straightforward to create an account, sign up, and immediately start using this particular chatbot. So feel free to do that at claude.ai. So some of the relative strengths of Claude really are centered around natural language or text output. And this actually includes code. So if you're trying to code and create some kind of application, then Claude is very good for various reasons. One of them is the high context window, which basically means that you're able to copy and paste large amounts of text into the window without actually reaching some kind of limit. The other is the high quality in general. So whether it's code or natural language, you'll find that the output and responses you get back is generally very decent. So as a free user, you get access to Claude 3 Sonnet by default. And as I previously mentioned, this is their kind of medium tier offer. But if you actually go back to the leaderboard, which I linked on before, you'll find that Claude 3 Sonnet is actually very capable and is actually more capable than a lot of the free offers that are done by OpenAI, i.e. ChatGPT 3.5. In order to leverage their most powerful model, which is Claude 3 Opus, you need to subscribe to their premium subscription, which is at a similar price point as OpenAI's ChatGPT. Now the main relative con with Claude is that it excels at textual based output, as opposed to anything involving images or videos. So if you're looking for something a bit more versatile, we'll come onto that later in this video. The next option is Google Gemini, which has recently been rebranded from Google Bard. The models they offer are Gemini Pro, Gemini Pro 1.5, and Gemini Ultra, where the middle one is actually their best, and the first one is included with the free tier by default. But if you want to be able to choose between any of the others, then you have to pay for Google One Premium Subscription. I think most people would agree that overall it's an all-round capable model, but I think also they would agree that in terms of well-rounded, high-quality output, it's probably just a little bit short compared to some of the others. However, like all models, they all have their own relative pros and cons. And in this case, the best feature that I've personally found so far is the ability to parse YouTube videos. This means that you can paste the link of any YouTube video and then ask the chatbot to either summarize it or a specific question based on the topic covered. Seeing as the company behind Gemini is Google, which is traditionally known to be one of the big players in the AI space, I expect Gemini to grow very rapidly and offer many new exciting features to come. The next model of choice is Llama 3, and this is created and offered by Meta, the same company behind Facebook, but there is one key difference, and that is this particular model is open source, which means it's made publicly available and anyone can download and use it on their own machine, whereas a lot of the other models are proprietary. Here's an example where I've downloaded Llama 3 myself, and it's running on my own machine, generating content just like a normal chatbot, except it doesn't actually require an internet connection because all of the generation is actually occurring locally on this actual machine. Now for most people, running the model locally isn't really practical because it requires fairly decent hardware to generate content in decent time, but also it requires the setup process, which if you don't know what you're doing, can be a little bit complicated. 
So you can access their very best model in a very intuitive way at meta.ai, but unfortunately there is one slight catch and that is it's not made available in every country as of yet, but I'm sure that will increase in the future. Also pro tip, if you have a VPN and you know how to use it, then you can get around this problem quite easily. Like I said, the main advantage of Llama 3 is that it's open source, which means there's no trickery going on behind the scenes and everything that you're actually generating can be done locally or anywhere that you desire. The next chatbot is Coral by Cohere. Well, technically the model is called Command R+, but the chatbot itself is called Coral. In many ways, this is a little bit more niche in that most people haven't heard of it, but it is at the same time aimed more at enterprise users, so that's probably the main reason. Overall, it does have some nice customizable features and features geared towards enterprise users, but it's overall quite balanced and generates high quality output as shown in the previous leaderboard. Again, its main strength is also its main weakness in that it isn't really geared towards the everyday average user. Now we're gonna move on to the most popular and familiar option, which is ChatGBT. Technically with a pro subscription or an API key, you can choose between lots of different models, but we're gonna be covering two of the main ones, which are ChatGPT 3.5 and ChatGPT 4. By default, with the free tier, you get access to ChatGPT 3.5, which is lightweight, fast, but not quite as capable as ChatGPT 4, and it doesn't include some of the additional features like image generation. Overall, ChatGPT 4 is probably one of the most versatile and well-rounded models because it gives you access to lots of different features, plus the added benefit of custom GPTs. I did cover in a previous video how you can utilize custom GPTs to create your own custom language coach or tutor, but overall, custom GPTs is just a way for you to tweak the model or essentially create your own model based on ChatGPT that has the functionality that you desire. On the pro subscription, which is only really gonna be the case if you're working directly in ChatGPT's interface, the main con that I've come across is that sometimes if you make too many requests within a certain time frame, which is usually three hours, sometimes it restricts you from making further requests until after that time frame has expired. This won't happen if you're working as a developer or programming an API key, but it is something to bear in mind, particularly when you're creating custom GPTs, because if you create a custom GPT, you often have to feed in many messages, and within a certain time frame, you will probably use your particular cap, and therefore you have to wait until you can actually run and test the model afterwards. The other main con is that while ChatGPT 3.5 is lightweight, functional, and overall very popular, there are arguably better models for the free price point. The next model that I wanna talk about is in a way a little bit different, but it's also very capable and for many people could be very useful, and that is Perplexity. Perplexity is essentially the modern take and alternative to the traditional search engine, in that you can type in something and it will search the internet, return lots of results, but this time in a much more curated and helpful way compared to something like Google. In a way, it sort of combines the functionality of ChatGPT4 with a search engine where it provides up-to-date results, really good references and sources, but at the same time, it can tailor that information in a way that is typical of an AI chatbot. Also, as a free user, you get access to five pro searches within a given time frame, and this allows for a more customizable and in-depth experience overall. For example, you can ask it to help you plan a trip to Japan, and then it will come back with very specific information and things that you can build upon so that by the end of your pro search, you can get all the tools and information that you need. Now, in terms of the models you can choose from, by default, you get access to the in-house perplexity model, but if you have a pro subscription, you can actually choose between some of the models that I've already mentioned, including ChatGPT4 Turbo and Claude 3 Opus. So based on that, it might seem like this is the jack of all trades. Here you can utilize all of the best models under one paid subscription, so this might be the way to go. In a way, that is true, although I would caveat that by saying that the only potential drawback is that you're getting the responses tailored and tweaked to fit inside the perplexity window. So if you're looking for something a little bit more raw, then you might be better off going to the provider of that model itself and subscribing there. But if you like the way perplexity looks, how the content is generated, and the ability to provide accurate sources, as well as choose between all the different models that you want, then perplexity is a very good choice for a lot of people. In addition, you don't actually have to leverage their paid subscription. You can utilize their free tier and still make use of several of these different features. Now, if you've made it this far and you think you know which is the best model for you, 
or at least you're curious enough to give it a go, then there's one more thing to consider, and that is how you actually make use of ChatGPT in your everyday life. Like I said already, knowing where to go and how to use these models can be thought of as a sort of a life cheat code, but I do want to stress that there is one downside, and that is becoming overly reliant on them because there are some other drawbacks. For example, I think they work best when they're thought of as a co-pilot rather than the main pilot when trying to achieve a particular task. So for example, if you're an aspiring journalist, it might be tempting to utilize ChatGBT or any of the other models to create your entire article content day to day. But this is the major problem that over the long term, you actually become a less capable writer, your ability to dissect and manipulate the language is majorly decreased, and many other side effects too. Now you might be thinking that this might not be a problem in the first place, because if everyone's using ChatGPT and this is the state of the modern world, then you actually don't need to be able to write. But this isn't true because your ability to generate the content that you desire is based largely on your ability to articulate and formulate your ideas. So there's still going to be a direct relationship between the quality of your writing and the quality of the output that you get back from ChatGPT or alternatives. So I guess the takeaway here is don't let these tools impede your ability to become effective at what you do. Instead, utilize them as a co-pilot and maximize your productivity. Anyway, that's all for this one. I hope you enjoyed it or got some benefit. If you did, then feel free to let me know in the comments, like, subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.